Dante. Today I'm filming with the GoPro Mini 1080p 30fps. I export it to 720p. And in today's ASMR video, we're going to be photographing with the Ricoh GR3 in low light conditions. And yeah, so I'm just getting my morning started here in Philadelphia. The water is roaring today. Fast moving water, high tide. I can tell by the way in which the uh, bridge looks. And so yeah, what's up? Uh, today I'm just getting my day started with a nice walk, uh, photographing with the GR3. High contrast black and white, small JPEG. And P mode, single point autofocus. This is an incredible time to photograph. I think that low light is perhaps amazing to explore photographically due to the atmosphere, you know, this sort of uh, lighting condition can provide some ethereal and surreal lighting conditions that spark my creativity, my wonder, and my curiosity. Where ultimately, when you consider motivation and inspiration and these kind of things within photography, it all stems and starts back to these sort of like basic notions of curiosity. How curious can one become? How curious can one be? This is a question that's been on my mind. The slow autofocus. I mean, really, it is super low light, but it's just funny. It's like. Yeah. There's so you know what's amazing about photography is you can walk the same way every single day and just by you know throwing the camera around and remaining open find different ways to approach the same thing in a photograph. And you know this is something that I believe we need to um, explore more as uh, street photographers, right? To approach street photography specifically, you know, this sort of style of photography in a more open and loose manner where you don't tie yourself down to any particular one way of doing things but actually photograph sort of endlessly and openly with curiosity and you must remain open to the mundane uh i really do believe that's the name of the game it's all in the mundane right and to just observe your town observe your city observe wherever you live and wherever you may be and the change over time and the different sort of um things to photograph such as the architecture the people the moments you know the details the textures um there's so much out there and it's uh i believe a wise idea to simply remain open in this sort of state of play where you sort of have to return to this amateurish state and not take yourself so seriously on the street and i believe this is something that has been enhancing my street photography over the past year making work endlessly i've been photographing for the past 365 days all day essentially and i've made about 130,000 photographs um you know, one of these things I've been thinking about is there's no excuse to not make photos, right? There's always this sort of possibility to make photographs, uh, even considering yourself as a subject. You know, to make selfies, I think is an interesting thing. Um, use the light around you. Uh, you know, these sort of things can become really beautiful when you explore and open your mind up to uh, new ideas like this. Um, you know, the selfie being this sort of modern thing, um, this sort of uh, cultural trend that is perhaps interesting to follow, where I think a lot of trends wind up being bad in general. But to embrace the selfie openly as, you know, you can become art, right? Your face, your body is art. Here we have this incredible looming cloud and you can see the sort of blue sky as the sun is rising peer beyond the horizon and what's so fascinating about photographing these sort of locations each day 
is the change in the background, the change in the sky, the clouds. I mean, there's really infinite possibilities within the realm of photography. You know, one of these things that bothers me is when people say that everything's been done, right? Everything's been done under the sun. I find this to be a very defeatist attitude and I'm still open and curious about what reality will manifest to be in a photograph, being the ultimate question to ask yourself each day. And right now it's flurrying. I've got some, you know, little snowflakes hitting my skin. I find the sensory overload to be so amazing, right? To embrace the textures of the bark on the trees, um, you know, to touch things, right? To have this sort of like interaction with life itself through your visual acuity, through looking at the world with your sharp, keen eye, making observations, interacting with others, um, sort of feeling the air, the fresh air, you know, this sort of uh, sensory experience photography can be. It's a very incredible, incredible gift in my life that fuels my lust for pretty much every single day waking up. Where every day, you know, I think it's important to actually treat each day like it's your last, right? What actions would you take differently if today was your last? This flood is <laughs> perhaps an interesting thing to photograph. I don't know, I don't, there's like this flood here. I don't know how I would depict it. I guess looking at the reflection, oh, it's really muddy too. I don't want to slip, <laughs> be careful. Uh, maybe that branch over there, there's a branch that got caught between the pole there is uh, maybe interesting to photograph, I don't know. I'm mostly interested right now in the sort of sky. I think this is a, a great thing to look at this morning. Also, what's amazing when you use this high contrast effect and I'm photographing where there's that sort of artificial light with, with the cars going by the highway. Man, when there's like a white truck or something, the contrast pops out and sometimes I surprise myself with the things that I can uh, photograph. Also, I like this idea that what you see isn't what you get, but what you get is what you didn't see. So it's basically this notion that a lot of the things that are revealed in the photograph are things that you did not see in reality and to transcend the mundane things and uplift something out of nothing where I believe the use of the high contrast black and white, it offers more sort of flexibility and creative potential. Looking at the leaves, looking at the bark on the trees, looking at the textures and all of these different things can become fascinating. And when I look back at my photographs, I smile. And I think that's the ultimate goal, right? To make photographs that make you smile, to make photographs that bring you joy, right? And I think this is a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. You know, to uh, surround yourself with the beauty of life itself. You know, the beauty of life is in the great outdoors where the greatest privilege of being a human being is to actually simply be alive. And to live in this sort of full, sort of, experience through the medium of photography perhaps we can leave our own legacy and our own story and create our own sort of mythology right where now we are entering the world of Dante And every day I like to photograph this same statue, the same mundane statue. But today I think it's much more interesting because of the sky in the background and the way that the, in, the artificial light from the lamppost interacts with it. And what I like to do is, so I have my exposure compensation set to zero here, right? It's gonna be completely dark. Then I go to 0.3, it's still gonna be dark, right? 0.7, dark, right? And then I go to one, when I go plus one, you know, we get more light in here and it, it's something I think uh, to play with, right? When you're using a Rico in P mode or automatic mode, whatever your settings are, play with the exposure compensation tool. This is something I find to be a really useful thing and to, you know, treat your camera and treat the way in which you operate the camera itself in the simplest way possible. So setting the camera to P mode, single point autofocus, 
um, exposure compensation, small JPEG files, high contrast, black and white, everything baked into the camera. And then when you go home, you import using a small USB-C dongle to an iPad Pro using the Photos app, you can speed things up where actually the Photos application is faster than Lightroom, right? Lightroom sucks. I think Lightroom's good if you're shooting raw and it worked for me for a while. But now that I'm photographing in this newfound approach, the Photos app works way better. It's way snappier. And, you know, there's something about this new process, guys. I'm really, really, really excited by it. And I found that this past year of exploring it has given me this sort of endless fascination in photography so this is very interesting so i photographed this exact tree yesterday but now that we have this crazy different sky in the background this is way more interesting and i'm making a better photograph here of this the only difference is i'm not capturing the i'm not capturing the flood itself but the uh, branches of the tree you know is what becomes quite interesting and the sort of way in which it uh, sits in front of these clouds. I mean, the background today is just absolutely amazing. It's just breathtaking to be outside in this amazing condition where, you know, it's tragic to see a flood, but, you know, perhaps to laugh in the face of chaos and to find beauty in it is what makes uh, this thing so awesome. And yeah, I think actually, to see how I'm making lots of snapshots? Make many snapshots of one thing, right? Like, so just a simple practical sort of tip, like don't stop. Like if you find something that's intriguing to you, like this branch here, this these sort of trees, you know, see if you can get closer. See how close you can get and make a photo without slipping into the water. Uh, maybe even just looking straight up at the branches, but you want that divide between the background of the sky and the clouds. You know, maybe if I increase my exposure compensation and step back, would that work? Would I be able to uh, show this? Maybe. You know, but to just try more, right? To try with the different exposure compensations, right? To sort of shift your angle, right? Shift the angle. Now I'm getting the uh, building in the back on the left-hand side, which is maybe a good element. Maybe that's better, right? To move your body physically is to readjust the composition. Forget about focal length and all these sort of um, technicalities. Everything's in the movement of your body with photography and actually making more photos will then allow you to find more success even thinking of some of my best photographs over the years i didn't just make one one snapshot and, and and move on right a lot of my best photographs were made with multiple snapshots with multiple photos taken at the scene and um you know maybe actually with this photo it would be better for me to go to av mode and to make my sort of uh snap focus set to infinity i want the background and focus right so let me let me readjust my way of photographing this particular scene let me go to av mode f8 snap focus infinity right thinking of the focus point thinking of the way in which the background's blurred with p mode if i'm focusing on the branch maybe it would be better for me to get get more of the uh background and focus than the foreground right there's a lot of different ways you can approach one particular thing and yeah i think it's just wise to experiment as much as possible when you find something that intrigues you i'm really intrigued by this tree i mean yesterday i was photographing it and uh today once again and you know there's something about the uh repetition within photography specifically even just making photos of the sort of same thing here Just switched my snap focus to two meters to focus more on the uh, tree itself. You know, it's something to be said about this process. It simplifies things. I don't have to think too much. I can sort of just throw the camera around and if I need to make any adjustments, it's a really quick switch of the lever. It's a quick switch of the snap focus or the um, exposure compensation and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, there's something about using an LCD screen. You know, using an LCD screen, I think it offers what, see, like this one might be the sort of shot that I was looking for, simplif simplification, right? To have a minimalist composition where I'm focused merely on the branches of the tree and the highlights in the background with the different clouds looming. You know, maybe I didn't want all the excessive stuff in the background with the buildings and the cars going by. Maybe I wanted something like this, you know, originally when I approached this tree. And through working different angles and trying different things, I'm able to find uh, new ways of seeing one one um, one subject, right? There's like an infinite amount of ways to photograph one particular subject. And yeah, I think this example is actually quite perfect to highlight here in the beginning of this video. But yeah, let's continue walking. Um, I've been walking the same lane every day and picking at these leaves and observing the change of the leaves and how they're withering away and will eventually fall and then regenerate once spring comes. You know, there's something about the impermanent nature of life itself that is a fascinating thing to approach in photography. It's uh, very wise to consider everything around you this way where, you know, even yourself, right? Yourself, your body, your face will change over the years. The wrinkles will appear. And I actually believe this is more beautiful, right? When you have, you know, uh, wrinkles on your face as you get older, I think it's a beautiful thing, right? We should uh, strive for natural beauty to not uh, use these sort of um, plastic surgeries and things to enhance our beauty. I think it's actually uh, quite grotesque and becomes ugly. Um, but yeah, the idea is when you approach life and consider the impermanent nature of things, it's much more freeing and open. Um, you know, even looking at the graffiti on the signs, right? People graffiti all over the signs, the weathering of the uh, sort of um, rusted things, right? The way that the uh, sort of scrape marks appear within the... Uh, plastics, just different things. Even text becomes interesting and just looking at text is interesting to me. Keep tidy, you know, and you have this sort of like textural element here. I can go to macro mode, right? I think macro mode on the Ricoh Gear 3 is amazing. Um, this is one of its greatest features to be frank. And, you know, just looking at all of the complexities of life itself, I think is, uh, just a wise consideration. Where well, I have this love for wisdom recently, I've been thinking about, you know, seeking wisdom from others, perhaps elderly people are great to chat with. Um, you know, I love hearing the stories of others. I actually think it's um, maybe more interesting to speak about yourself and your experiences than to talk about others or live vicariously through others experiences or you know talk about popular media maybe to be selfish and to actually indulge in yourself in conversation with people and to give your perspective is a wise approach where even considering some time i spent in an uber um, this past weekend i was chatting with the man and i always love when i take a taxi or whatever it is um, i like to chat with you know, the driver, and you know, to generally just have this open mind and interact with strangers. And you know, when I was fo when I was talking with them, there's these simple things that occur in a conversation, right? We're passing by this uh, neighborhood. He says, oh, I grew up here. And I say, oh, I grew up there. And then like that simple thing where like, we all have this unique point of view of life itself like we grew up in the same city but from different parts of town and have these um, different stories to share based upon our experiences itself I mean there's something simple about that oh I grew up here you grew up, I, I grew up there like that simple dialogue is interesting to me and like sharing your sort of story and your experiences yeah maybe um, more interesting where you know like I find joy in speaking with you know the lady sitting on the bench in the park that feeds the pigeons or the squirrels um, you know I think it's much uh, more interesting to chat with those uh, sort of people or just people um, 
even just people that are just older than you generally, maybe it's wise to uh, sort of embrace our elders and to uh, show gratitude for them and you know even considering my mother like very grateful like without her i'd probably not be here right now like being raised by a single mother you know thinking of the grind to uh achieve uh her own career goals and also raising me and my brother <clears throat> yeah i think uh Showing gratitude is good. And perhaps we can find wisdom within elders. You know, this lady yesterday, she asked me, what are your dreams? You know, she was, she was asking me what my dreams are. I, no one's ever asked me that question. You know, no one's ever asked me that question. But this 90 year old lady asked me that question and the first response I had, I was like, oh wow, I was kind of like flustered. You know, what dreams do you have to fulfill? And I was like, spread more kindness, <laughs> spread more joy, like simple shit. Like, Honk honk. Yeah, no, I think that uh, you know that simple goal. I think. I mean, I think is a good one, right? Where maybe it's, you know I've been thinking a lot about this idea of like selfishness versus selflessness. Like perhaps to be selfish is oftentimes seen as unethical or morally incorrect or bad but i'm starting to think more in terms of selfishness being a good thing because the more i focus on my own physiological well-being whether it's my health getting better sleep um i am seeking wisdom through just you know thinking about life or experiences i've had and the more i have you know, energy and power and ultimately fueling myself with this sort of lust for life and joy, I can then spread it with others. Um, yeah. So maybe to be selfish is to be selfless in a strange paradoxical sort of way. So you can see the sky is completely changed now so that moment that i photographed was that split second or like a few minutes of time but i was really working that scene we call it right work the scene work the scene is a good notion in photography right this is something that we should strive to do when we see something good um, when do you know that you see something good Perhaps it makes you say, wow. Perhaps you look at it with this sort of sense of wonder and awe. And this then becomes sublime, where photographing in this high contrast aesthetic, I believe delivers this sort of visual feast, if you will, and it feels right and it feels sublime. And perhaps the feeling of the photograph is important to consider a photograph as a reflection of the soul of the artist rather than a depiction of reality in front of you maybe is a more interesting approach really and it doesn't even have to be this like hippy dippy thing it's like a lot of photography now that's reality based or you know this is reality based I'm, I'm photographing in the real world in reality but to transcend it I think is um, more beautiful and also just more interesting where I have this frustration with a lot of modern photography and it seems as though it's becoming very blasé and boring and sort of just, just like, I don't know, it, there's something something going on. I mean, I try to stay away from looking at contemporaries or photography these days, but I have this frustration with it. I think something's going on. Um, I think what happens is there's lots of trends and people follow them too much. 
and you know something happens there where maybe others get pigeonholed into certain ways of doing things and I think um, ultimately all this stuff doesn't really matter matter it doesn't bother me but it is this um, slight uh, frustration that maybe fuels me but I don't want to be fueled by frustration it's just a thought <sighs> to look at the world in all of its complexities right to consider everything and anything right as a potential photograph I mean when I look up at the sky and I see that plane flying by I mean it just makes me feel good <laughs> what am I trying to say Wait, is it really not perhaps through making photographs just makes you feel good they're looking at everything as a potential um, canvas, right? Where the street and the world itself is our canvas, right? This is a great thing, <clears throat> you know? There's just something about it. There's something about walking around the waters, you know, walking around the river, coming to an elevated space, sort of being up early in the morning, setting your day off with this sort of creative um, adventure that, uh, never ceases to make me smile you could say and some uh, physiology thoughts strength thoughts Spartan goals um, you know I find this uh, notion of the body being democratic to be a good one where perhaps it's more virtuous to flex your physical body than superfluous things like a Lamborghini <laughs> the lame old Lambo you know I think uh, health is wealth and we can all thrive together no breakfast no lunch uh, bread meat no chicken no pork no turkey etc uh, strive to walk endlessly throughout the day the uh, Spartan warrior mode of living is marching 30,000 steps um, other things like no alcohol no smoking etc like these things are just generally bad right don't do it it's poisoning you and it's just uh, irresponsible and sort of silly the more that I think about it it's like it's just funny um, I haven't photographed this construction but it's cool I can't wait for that to be finished uh, I like riding that way on my bike. A lot of the times I close that street down in the summertime and you can ride on the on the road, it's awesome. And the sunrise is so beautiful. I never want to miss another sunrise again, right? To focus on sleep, getting eight to 12 hours of sleep. Um, I'm starting to think it's virtuous to just go to bed, right? As early as humanly possible. <laughs> I uh, have been getting in bed around 7 p.m. and uh, waking up extremely early, like, today around 3.30 <laughs> um, which is awesome because I wake up I can kind of just putter around do my own thing and get my body going finish a photo walk hit my fitness goals go for a walk create new photographs cull through photographs remix photographs do some calligraphy drawings, write some blog posts, make videos, <laughs> make a podcast, do a POV. Like I can do a lot of different things before 9 a.m. because I'm going to sleep super, super early and getting this deep sleep where, you know, once it's um, sunset around 4.30 these days, I have my feast, one meal a day. And then once um, the sun fully sets and I finish my meal, I turn all of the lights off in the house. I sit on the floor with my iPad dimmed all the way to the bottom brightness. 
do a mundane task like cull through photos, which is a complete bore. <laughs> so it's something that keeps me um, keeps me bored and allows me to get tired or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll just sit on the floor, stretch, do some yoga, take a hot bath or a hot shower, sort of meditate in complete darkness. Once it's dark outside, just keep all the lights off and in the morning if you wake up and catch the uh, sun and get more sun exposure you will then start to uh, sleep with your natural circadian biological clock your natural circadian rhythm will be set for success and yeah i've been uh extremely extremely energized because of this where yeah raw energy is built in the bed you know sleeping is critical to consider especially even considering like your consciousness like you're more awake like like in the day you want to be awake with your eyes wide open especially as a photographer and so you know focusing on strength and focusing on hy hypertrophy hypertrophy i need to learn how to say this hyper hypertrophy hypertrophy increasing your nutrition by eating lots of red meat and lifting farmers walk pull-ups push-ups simple shit you can um achieve this sort of physique and also strength that will keep you going where the motivation in this uh, sort of photography thing is merely in your legs and at the end of the day we're explorers at heart and to uh, think of yourself as this ultimate sort of spartan warrior adventurer is actually i think perhaps wise um with photography going forward because it's a very physical act funny media thoughts uh i think that the pov sort of gopro raw sort of uncut video format is the future a lot of things are scripted posed um you know kind of phony and fake considering a lot of modern news outlets or even youtubers and stuff it's like imagine i can go and uh create an avatar right now and feed it a script to uh talk about my favorite camera lens and create a whole youtube channel using artificial intelligence to uh sell you guys camera gear or something it's like i don't know the idea is like we should do things that human or that computers cannot and only create media that you wish to see manifest in the world just reviewing some of my old videos photos this year it just brings you a smile it's like it just makes you happy to look back at the old photos it's a way to cherish memories thinking of the photograph as memory what else yeah computer generated versus human generated let's do shit that the robots can let's share the raw human experience and the multifaceted ways in which we live our lives just gopro it This is what Sublime looks like. Look at the color. So, so, so beautiful. This sunrise is so nice today. You look out towards the roaring waterfall, the Schuylkill River, the boathouses, lots of runners. Here comes a runner. Get that running in, man. He's got his backpack on. So. Yeah, just, uh, Really grateful today, feeling good in the neighborhood. I am the friendly neighborhood Spartan photographer, signing out.